Good morning. Well, look at you all, the faithful bunch. Maybe this is the last time that we'll have to spring ahead on the clocks. Uh, I sure hope it is, but thank you for uh, being so steadfast in your faith and being here this morning. You know, they say that March either comes in like a lamb and goes out like a lion or vice versa. And in the meantime, it's hard to tell the difference in the middle of the month. So again, thank you for being here today. <clears throat> Please take a moment during worship. You'll find the black welcome pad uh, in the hymnal rack in front of you. And if you just let us know you're here, we appreciate that. If you have a prayer concern, please turn in that slip of paper with that person's name uh, as the offering plates go around, or just give it to the ushers on your way home this morning. Also, please do take your flyer, and uh, we invite you to please take that home with you so that you can remember in prayer all of those people listed there throughout the week. And um, we thank you very kindly. I know I say that every week, but there really is nothing more important than we do, that we do, than to hold up those people in prayer. With that, I invite you now to turn inside the front cover of your red hymnal to the brief order of confession and forgiveness. And rising, please face the cross at the back of the church. We gather in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of all mercy and consolation, Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Dear friends, we read in 1 John that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sin and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so now let us make confession of our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in our gathering hymn this morning, number 807.
Kyrie and hymn of praise is found in the front of your hymnal at pages 138 and 139. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King. Let us pray. Merciful God, the fountain of living water, you who quenches all our thirst and washes away all our sin, give us the water that springs up to life everlasting always. Bring us to drink from the fountain that flows from the beauty and truth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. We pray all of these things in his holy name. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 17. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it so that people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in a responsive prayer of Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. 
Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him, songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God. And a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land. Which his hands have formed. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as at Meribah. As on the day at Massah in the wilderness. When your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof. Though they had seen my work. For forty years I loathed that generation and said, They are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not regard my ways. Therefore in my anger I swore, They shall not enter my rest. Amen. The second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God? For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. As the gospel reading is extended this morning, I invite you to be seated at this time. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? This is because Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. 
Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and with his sons and flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give, that I will give them, they will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one who is with you now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestor, ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where the people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When He comes, He will proclaim all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am He, the one who is speaking to you. Just then His disciples came, they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want? Or, Why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to meet him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, saying, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything that I had ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you have said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, Isaac, it's your turn to come forward for the children's sermon. The rest of you can come forward too, if you like. I hope you do. Ah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm going to lead a, need a lot of muscle power. So I'm going to employ the acolytes here today too to help us with the children's sermon. All right, good morning. Welcome. 
All right. Well, it is the time change, isn't it? So, um, so it is a little bit difficult, right? Because it's, it's not really... Uh, it's not really 8.45 right now. It's, it's really only 7.45, something like that. Huh? So it's pretty early in the morning. So today, right, today we hear a story about two people. Come on over to the baptismal font. I'll show you some things here. Come on over this way. Okay? We hear a story about two people, and it's a story about water. Okay? Now, this is where we're going to start at the baptismal font. And this is where we're going to end at the baptismal font, okay? We're going to talk today about water, all right? So, that's what we're going to talk about. But who are the people that you think we're going to talk about? Right? Who do you think? Who's one of the two people, Tim? Only give me one. The Samaritan lady. The Samaritan lady, that's right. And who's the other one? Who do you think? Haley. Right. Who do you think, Isaac? Jesus. Jesus is the correct answer, okay? So, Jesus, it's about noon. He's been walking all morning in the heat of the day, okay? And he's tired out. He's walking from Jerusalem in the south. He's on his way up to Galilee in the north. And it's a journey of almost 70 miles. He's not doing it all in one day, of course. And because he wanted to take the most direct route, he had to go through Samaria. Now, normally, Jews, Jesus was Jewish, of course, normally Jews would not go through Samaria because they didn't want to have anything to do with the Samaritans. Okay? They were, um, they were not friendly with one another. In fact, they really thought badly of each other. Now, that wasn't to say that Jesus thought badly of them. Not at all. But Jesus decides that he's going to take the most direct route, and so he goes through Samaria. And when he's there, it's about noon. He's worn out from having walked in the hot summer sun all day long. And so he stops at the well. That's kind of like the baptismal font, a fountain of water. So he comes over to the well. Let's walk over here. And he finds a woman who is come there to draw water. She's come to get water out of the well. Now the well is very deep. Even today, the well is still over 100 feet deep, okay? So it had a lot of water, but it was very, very deep. And you had to have a long rope and a a big bucket, okay? Normally, when women came to this well, they would come in the very early of the morning or at the end of the day when it was cool. But this woman came during the middle of the day, when it was the hottest time of the day, which is kind of strange. I'll tell you more about that during the grown-up sermon, so be listening, okay? Now, have you three decided who's going to do the heavy lifting and who's going to do the spotting? Okay, Um, kids, let's come stand over this way, okay, because the acolytes are going to show us here what these women had to do every day. Come stand over here. We're going to give them some space. All right, ladies, go ahead and pick this up, okay? Go ahead and get one, one on either side. Now, um, yeah, so this is going to, right, go ahead and maybe turn around, right? You've done squats before. You're going to have to squat down and get it on your shoulders, okay? Get in the middle, find the middle, find the balance point first, okay? Ladies, you might get ready on either side, okay? And let's make sure that the, uh, okay, and on three, you count, okay? Okay, you hold that tight as she goes up, okay? And uh, you hold that tight as she, okay, go up until you feel the tension come on. Okay, and you count three. Ready? Two, three, lift. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, You might have to unwrap it a little bit. Okay, keep going. Can you do it? Wow. How much is that? Look at that. Is that pretty heavy? Not really. Good. Take a few steps over here so that the, okay, spotter guys, keep spotting her. Put your hand right here on the, on the thing, so hold it steady for her, okay? Go ahead and take a few more. I know it's bending. All right. Okay, can you see that? Can you turn around? Can you rotate? Now, this is how people transported water. Okay, go ahead and set it down, please. Okay, and put the yoke down on the floor. Thank you very much. 
That's 83.4 pounds. 83 pounds. That's 10 gallons of water, right? You weigh more than that, Isaac? I don't think so. Okay, right? 83 pounds. That's like two bags of softener salt. Wow, that is heavy, isn't it? Right? You could even see, one of you saw the yoke, right? It was bowing here, right? When I brought this in yesterday, I wasn't even sure that I was going to make it all the way up the aisle. Look at that, huh? Do you want to try lifting that? No, yes, yes. Yes? Okay, we'll try at the end, all right? We'll try at the end, okay? But the woman would come to the well every day. Now, maybe she wasn't taking 10 gallons of water, because okay? after all, 83 pounds is a long lot of weight to carry. And she had a long way to walk. The well was about at least half a mile outside of her town. Can you imagine walking half a mile twice a day with however much weight you had in the jugs? Isn't that amazing? Yeah, pretty amazing. And it would have been, after all, right, pretty heavy. Okay? Really heavy. So, this is what she was doing every day. Okay? And she had to come and do it in the heat of the day. Well, that's what's going on when she encounters Jesus. And they're, they're sitting there at the well, and Jesus says, give me a drink, please. And she says, what? You are a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan. We're not supposed to have anything to do with each other. And then he says, if you understood, if you knew who it was that was saying to you, give me a drink, you would turn the question around and you would say to him, please give me a drink. And he would give you living water so that you would never, ever be thirsty again. Now Jesus wasn't talking about the kind of water that quenches our thirst in our mouth. He was talking about the kind of water that quenches our thirst for God. Right? Because after all, who is Jesus? God. He is God, isn't he? He's God. We also understand that he's God's son. Okay? So when Jesus says, I can give you living water, do you think he's talking about water for this first earthly life or water for our heavenly life? Right, he's talking about the forever kind of life, isn't he? Right? So he's talking about heavenly water. Come back to the baptismal font here, would you? Okay. So this is where we're going to end this morning. So the woman says, please give me some of that living water. Because she was getting tired and worn out from coming twice a day in the heat of the day. Right? She was taking a double portion at 12 noon. But she misunderstood, didn't she? She thought, at first she thought, that Jesus was just talking about earthly water. But later she understood because she said, I know that Messiah is coming, that is Jesus, and that he is the Christ. And then she goes back and you know what else she does? She tells all of her friends and family and her neighbors, surely that he's not Jesus, is he? Surely he's not the Messiah. He told me everything that I've ever done. Right? And then she brought all the Samaritans back to Jesus. And then all the Samaritans believed in him too. Isn't that amazing? And so these people who were not friends before became friends forever from that point going forward. Right? And just as important, the woman realized that what Jesus was going to give her was not an earthly water, but a heavenly water. That's the kind of water that we find in baptism because we take regular water and we put it together with God's Word. So just like Jesus promised to give her living water, Jesus promises to give you living water. The kind of water that washes us clean from sin and the kind of water that gives us the assurance that we will live forever in heaven. It's pretty wonderful stuff, isn't it? All right? Let's pray. And then if you want to see how heavy that is, we'll give you just a moment to do that. So let's pray. Dear God in heaven, we thank you that your son Jesus is the living water and that he quenches our thirst for you. 
O Lord, we know that we will have to drink much water on earth while we live, but we also know that you have given us the water for heaven forever, for life everlasting. We thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, all right, acolytes, I'll need your help again. Okay. All right, let's, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out. Time out. Time out. Got to put this back around here. Okay, something like this. All right. Uh, stand by. Okay, there we go. Now I'll wrap it up. That way it's the same. Okay, acolytes, get on either side, please. Okay. Okay. Oh, let's see if they come down this way a little bit. All right. Stand off to the side. I'll let you. Okay. Don't lift it. All right. Wait, okay, anyone else want to try? Okay, go ahead. All right, Hadley. Whoa. Oh, she did it. All right. Anybody else? 83 pounds. Oh, I know. It's heavy, isn't it? Isaac, you got, whoa, you got both of them off, Isaac. All right, Tim. How about that? Outstanding. Okay, put it down before we break them. <laughs> okay, go back to your seats. <laughs> I know, I know. I know, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's hard that way, isn't it? Okay, we're going to push this off to the side. All right. Okay. You know, my greatest fear of kept me up all night long was, what if one of those splits open? I've got five gallons of water on the floor. That's a lot to mop up, isn't it? But all's well. That ends well. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Well, <clears throat> we don't have enough time to talk about this passage from John chapter 4 all in one fell swoop, all in one one setting uh, of the dinner table. So we'll talk about just a few items and hopefully that will whet your appetite. Huh? Uh, it won't quench your thirst, but hopefully it will keep you satiated for the day. <clears throat> when, Jesus, um, when Jesus encounters the woman at the well, it, is, uh, it, it truly is a remarkable episode. Um, and it's hard to overstate the significance uh, uh, of this encounter. We have the disciples who uh, typically, as, uh, as nearly always, uh, are, are befuddled by what's going on. They don't understand why Jesus would be talking to any Samaritan, much less to a Samaritan woman. Uh, we, have, um, we, have, we have this notion of uh, the story being set over the noon hour which is not by coincidence either. We notice more than a few details about uh, uh, this lady, but especially that she has been married uh, five times and that the present arrangement is not marriage. We, um, we see that she is uh, 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 quite bold in many ways, and arguably she is, she is the first apostle the first one who is sent out into the world to share the good news. And we should not be surprised, in fact, that God's word, as it goes out, does not return empty-handed, but that the whole Samaritan village comes, and many of them believe, last but certainly not least, we should notice that Jesus remains with the Samaritans, not for that afternoon, not just for a day, but for instead two days, two days time while he is on his way to Galilee. All of these things and so much more we could spend uh, uh, many weeks talking about, but here's a few things that I'll lift up for you this morning principally. Notice Jesus' first words to the woman. Give me a drink. Now, one of the things that uh, we often imagine about God is that he makes demands upon us. He gives us commands, for sure, the Ten Commandments. We can start there. 
And that's typically how, as people who in our fallenness think of one another, we think too also of God, that he is a demander. And so when Jesus says to this woman, give me a drink, politely as I'm sure he must have spoken, Undoubtedly, she heard in the same way that she had heard any other person make any other command or demand of her. And she recoils. And then she says, well, wait a minute. On top of all of that, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan. And there was no need for any explanation about the animosity between the two peoples. So, From the very beginning, you have this moment of standoffishness, not from the Lord, but from the person. And that, my friends, is in fact typical of all people, that we would say to the one who would give life everlasting, what do you have to do with me? But then Jesus takes this opportunity And he turns the question around and he says, if you knew who it was that was asking of you, give me a drink, you would instead say to him, give me, give me a drink. And he would give you everlasting water. Well, the woman has been coming to take a double portion of water, not twice a day, but singularly in the middle of the day, in the heat of the day. And so the woman is understandably eager to have her burden lightened. Jesus says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And she has no understanding of that yet. But we can picture it in our own mind's eye, and so we also understand why it is that she would say, give me this living water so that I may never have to come here again we can understand. Why was it that she was coming in the heat of the day when everyone else was coming in the very early of the morning and in the cool of the evening? Why was she coming for a double portion of water? Surely she had all the same chores to accomplish as anybody else. Why was she coming just once, taking a double portion? And why in the heat of the noon hour? Well, we don't know this for a fact, but it is fair to draw an initial conclusion in saying that, well, we do know that she'd been married five times and that she wasn't married at present with the one with whom she lived. Perhaps it was out of shame. Perhaps she would have been scorned or mocked or ridiculed. Perhaps she just didn't want to put up with everything that went on in a small town. Surely you know what I mean by that. At any rate, she's there in the noon hour and has this fortuitous encounter with providence. And in time, as Jesus reveals to her who it is that is asking of her, give me a drink, she comes to understand that the living water that he is to give does not require buckets or wells that are dug into the earth. In fact, she leaves her bucket right at the well, and immediately she goes back to the village, and she says, come and see a man who has told me everything. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? And indeed, what she suspects and is nearly certain of already proves to be true. And the people come and they hear They hear the one who does not need an earthly bread for he is fed with food from his heavenly Father. And as they come to know Jesus and abide with Jesus, they too are fed with the bread of life everlasting, with the water that quenches every thirst for God that a person would ever have. Well, dear friends, this is the beginning of the story and that's where we will end presently at the moment but I'd invite you, taking your flyer home with you, to reread again tonight and maybe tomorrow also 
the story from John chapter 4 of the woman at the well and ask yourself in your reading this question. What is God saying to me? Peace be with you, sisters and brothers in Christ, and amen. Together, let us confess our Christian faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join our hearts together in prayer for all of God's people and for all in their hour of need. O Lord God, you have sent your Son to be living water, and where there is water, there is life and salvation everlasting. O Lord, we thank you for the water of baptism and that you renew us in it day by day. 
We thank You too, Lord, that on the cross when His side was speared and our Lord poured out His life, that water came forth from His side. O Lord, by Jesus' life and death, You save us from the power of sin and death. And by His resurrection, You give us the promise of life everlasting. For all this, Lord, we thank and praise You. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, it is not all that we owe to You. It is even more still than all this. And yet we thank and praise You, Lord. And we ask that You give us such kindness in our hearts that we too would share Your love with people in every moment of every persuasion and walk of life in every setting and context. O Lord, as You have been quick to forgive our sins, make us quick to forgive others and make us eager to welcome all. Lord, in Your mercy, hear our prayer. Especially, Lord, let down Your healing hand upon all of those who need any strength, any encouragement, any peace. We pray for Deanna, Stan, Chad, Diane, and Dylan. O Lord, stay close to the side of Clara, Brecca, Lily, Ron, and Christy. Remember Your promises, Lord, for Diane, Amy, Steve and Denny, Morgan, Will, and Matt. O Lord, surround with your holy angels Tyler, Brian, Matt, Daryl, and Jolene, and give the comfort of your Holy Spirit to Joe, Jake, Tracy, and all of those whom we name now in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, to these your children, pour out every mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you give the promise of life everlasting to all who have faith in you. We give you thanks and praise for the life and the love of our friends in Christ, for Dieter and for Ardeth. O oh Lord, watch over all of their families until the day when you reunite us all at your heavenly table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Especially in this time, O oh Lord, we pray for peace in the world. We ask your peace, security, safety for all the innocent in Ukraine. We ask that you strengthen their soldiers and their armed forces. But most importantly and greatest of all, Lord, we ask that the Russians would lay down their weapons and return to their own homes in peace, that a day of reconciliation may begin. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands now, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share Christ's peace with one another. Please be seated for the offering.
Let us pray. Holy God, merciful and gracious, You bring forth food from the earth and You nourish Your whole creation. Turn our hearts now toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know Your care and prepare us to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our salutary duty and joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, We praise your name and join their unending hymn. We holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear friends in Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body that is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering our Lord, let us pray together as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the table is set and all is prepared and our Lord says, come and dine. And so regardless of whatever congregation you might ordinarily attend, you are welcome at the table. Please be seated, coming forward at the direction of your ushers.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray in your mercy that you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 543. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.